What's crack a lacking your board broche mode just in case you did not know so and we're back for another 2020 NFL mock draft we're doing the first round if you didn't know I do this every two weeks so we'll have another one at the end of week 17 but then I'm gonna reel back a little bit on them let the offseason process kind of get underway before I put out another one doesn't mean less content on the channel though I'm gonna be if you didn't know I'm pumping out this week a uh, my top offensive lineman prospects for the 2020 NFL draft that's what y'all wanted, so I'm giving you what you want. I'm going to put up a poll this time around um, at the end of the week after that video comes out and see what position group you want me to do next. Corners, uh, quarterbacks, linebackers. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But if you haven't already, become a bro and subscribe. And if you enjoy the content, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. I can't stress enough how important that thumbs up is. It helps the video get discovered. And go ahead and share it with your friends if you really do enjoy the content and you're not too embarrassed, if you know what I'm saying. But, um, yeah, man, y'all actually been doing a really good job. The channel's been doing pretty well, but, hey, let's take it to that next level so I can devote a little bit more time to the content on the channel. But, uh, yeah, if you do want to discuss these picks, because I know everyone has their opinion. They, they think one way or another. Not going to agree with everything I have to say. But just remember, be cool in the comments. Be cool. T take one back. I've, I've had discussions with people in the comp comments, and I've, I've changed my opinion on some things. Or maybe I can change your opinion. Let's have a discussion. We all like football here, right? So let's talk it out. But with the, that being said, let's go ahead. Let's get this underway. We got picks one through four. We're starting with the Bengals, and they're going quarterback, of course. They're going quarterback. They're taking Joe Burrow. I mean... Quarterback is the most valuable position in the NFL. It, I, I've seen some people try to say, oh, Chase Young should be the pick here. He's the best player in the draft. Yes, but he's not the most valuable player in the draft. Quarterback is way more valuable than edge rusher. Burrow, without a shadow of a doubt, has been the best quarterback this season, and he probably will be the pick for the Bengals. On to the Giants. They're going Chase Young. Here comes the best player in the draft. It's Chase Young. I don't really need to talk about Chase Young too much. He He's just great. No one's rushed the passer successfully uh, at such a high rate as he has. Uh, the Giants, they really need playmakers on that defense. Chase Young would give them that. And then we're going to the Dolphins. Fins up, baby. Fins up. I'm a Dolphins fan if you didn't know. Um, we're going to a Tango Valoa. I know this is a very divisive pick here. And personally if this was me i might i might go to i would probably go with either a jerry judy or an andrew thomas but these mock drafts i try to make them i try to take my board players that i think where they're ranked but also try to keep in mind what nfl teams gms and whatnot what they would do and steven ross he he just i think just this past weekend he said we need a quarterback i want to get a quarterback in the offseason this past offseason, Brian Flores, he was like, he really likes Tua. He thinks Tua is one of the best. He's probably the best quarterback in this draft. Granted, this was before the college season started. So just taking those two things into account, they could they could take Tua here. We, we won't know more about uh, the injury, the hip, um, for another month or two. And we know he ain't, he's probably not going to be playing football, but they got Ryan Fitzpatrick under another year. So they still have... Fitzpatrick for another year they still have Josh Rosen so they could honestly see what they can do with him see what where he might be is he a starter is he a um backup quarterback but you take Tua he can sit for the year we know Tua he's extremely talented one of the most accurate quarterbacks in this draft especially with that deep ball so ah uh, you know what I I it, Tua with the Dolphins next pick they're in the 20s Tua will not be there. Tua will be a top 15 pick, especially if everything checks out and he's medically cleared for the most part. Tua will be a top 15 pick. So if you really want to get a quarterback, you have to get it here. I don't think they're high on Justin Herbert. Not many people are. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's just go to Washington. We're going to talk about Andrew Thomas. You already know he's a monster. He's a beast. He's super athletic. That's what the Redskins need. Some people say, hey, Jerry Judy. I don't mind if Jerry Judy is the pick here either. I just think I think the offensive line is much more of a dire need. 
They Trent Williams. Let's be honest, he's gone. Uh, they got some other free agents there. Uh, free agents there on the uh, offensive line. The offensive line needs rebuilt. Uh, they've kind of already done that with the right wide receiving core to an extent. It's Gary Terry. He looks like a wide receiver one. I mean, and they just started playing Kelvin Harmon a little bit more. And I'm 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 I don't want to say I'm pretty high on Kelvin Harmon. I think he could be a quality number two in the NFL. So you get some protection for your quarterback here you get andrew thomas going to the lions pick we're going picks five through eight kuda is just really hard to pass up here i know you got aj epinesa um even isaiah simmons but they're when looking at free agency they can address pass rusher in free agency you got uh yannick uh yeah yannick uh nagakwe you got uh <laughs> Vic Beasley, if we're being honest, uh, I might want to stay away from that. But, I mean, uh, Adrian Claiborne, older v uh, veteran right there. I mean, there, there's guys they can get. Dante Fowler. There's guys they can get at edge. As far as corners go, maybe maybe Byron Jones, which I think Dallas might be leaning more to re-signing him. But there's not much more. There's not really much depth there. There's not much playmaking ability. They need that. Darius Slay, he is, I know he's had to do a lot this year, but he's fallen down a step or two this season. Um, and he could be a prime cut candidate, honestly, after this season or next. Uh, Justin Coleman, he started the year hot, but since then he's allowed 800 yards this season. He's he's not been that great in the slot. I, I expect a rebound, but I mean... I mean, okay, um, I'll give him this. Amani uh, Ariwari, he's been really good in the last, I think he started the last four games. He's been pretty good, but they can add. They can add, and Akuda is that. They, I say, hey, they can, if they honestly, and you can go, there's good edge talent later in the draft that they really want to go that way. Um, so, yeah, I ended up going with that. He's He's right now the best player on my board anyway, so... Yeah, uh, Arizona Cardinals, C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb getting drafted above Jerry Judy. I think they're a lot. Uh, Judy and Lamb, they're very close. As far it's like one A and then one C. I still think Judy's uh, a Judy's still higher on my board, but Lamb's right behind him. Lamb's got size, and he played with Kyler Murray just a year ago. I'm just saying the Cardinals. They need a. They need. They need better at receiver. I, I like the, the little bit I've seen from uh, Andy Isabella, but he's a vertical threat. I uh, Christian Kirk, he's looked good at times this year. Larry Fitz, he's on his way out. Uh, Hakeem Butler, what do we know? What do we got with him? Keyshawn Johnson. Um, I mean, what they've been starting? What is it? Demetrius Bird. Yeah, they could. They could definitely get another. Um, he could get another receiver there, another dynamic threat, a guy who can be a true number one. And can you just think of that trio right there between Kirk, Lamb, and Isabella? That's scary. And then on top of that, you could say offensive line. Um, I think Kingsbury does a pretty good. He, get, he does a pretty good job of scheming, scheming it so that his offensive line doesn't have to do too much. That. See, I think I think they could upgrade the offensive line, obviously. But I think Kingsbury, I think I don't think you need a great offensive line or even a good offensive line for his system. That's just my take on it. And if they really want, they, there's some good guys in free agency they could go for. If they really want to get a young one, they could go in the second round with one. So, yeah, outside, I think I would really only touch receiver or defense with this pick. If I were the Cardinals, and I know in the past I've mocked a offensive line, but I've since turned the corner from that way of thinking. And then Jets are going Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa. Wirfs, athletic freak. He's a monster. He's got he just the combination of strength and athleticism. The guy's a former wrestler is phenomenal. Uh, one of y'all actually pointed out to me um, Douglas's is uh, his his history of drafting and he actually he when he was back when he i think it was the scout director for chicago 
you spent a couple of years there in Chicago. They ne- they never had a first round pick, but he would always prioritize linemen before anything else. So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is probably going to be an offensive, uh, yeah, probably an offensive line pick here because that line sucks. So I got them going with Tristan Wirfs. Then we got the Jaguars. They go Judy. You can't you can't let Judy go any further. Can you imagine the trio of Judy, uh, Chark, and Westbrook? That's just phenomenal. You give whoever is your quarterback next year, Foles or Minshew, you give them all these playmakers, and they do need to address the defense a ton, but they got enough capita that they can do that um, through the draft if they want to. But you just you don't pass on a playmaker. That offense has been real stagnant. Uh past six games so yeah they go and get judy here on to picks nine through 12 the chargers they could go quarterback i got them going offensive line i think if they go quarterback you are committing to a rebuild and then that team's gonna really just start cutting cutting a lot of the fat i don't think they're gonna do that yet i think they still have i think they still think they have a super bowl window with philip rivers so i think i expect rivers to sign a one-year deal or maybe they go with tyrod who knows but they do need to address the offensive line. They take whatever, whoever is the best offensive lineman here at this pick. It's Jedrick um, Wills. He's been a monster. Actually, I got it like maybe a month or so ago. Got in this discussion with this guy because um, I was big on Alex Leatherwood. And I still am. I, I think Wills and Leatherwood, they're neck and neck. It really depends what you like. But we again, he kind of brought it up to me. You know, he thinks... Wills is the better prospect. I like the uh, I like the versatility of Leatherwood better, but coming from the um, Chargers, same guys that signed Russell uh, Oku, um, the same guys that drafted DJ Fluker. Yeah, I could see them going Wills. I'm not saying Wills is those guys, but he is built in the same mold as those guys. I think Wills is. The most dominant run blocker in all of college football today and he's quick he, he's athletic he's he's super strong but he is sneakily very athletic he's got really quick feet so i think yeah this is where the uh chargers will go then we go to the broncos they could go a variety of different spots i would have loved if one of the receivers whether it's lamb or uh judy to fall here didn't happen so where do you go after that? I was thinking maybe Grant Delpit because I don't know who they're going to re-sign. They're not going to get Harris back, so they could go Christian Fulton. I don't know. Are they going to re-sign Justin Simmons? They really should. So they could go Delpit if they don't do that, but I think they will. Um, offensive line, I mean, I was just talking about how Leatherwood, I think he's really close. I think in the end of it, it when it's all said and done, they really do need to address the defensive line. It hasn't been the great it hasn't been that great at stopping the run. Derrick Brown's pretty darn good at stopping the run. Some say he is almost a pure run stopper. He has shown flashes um, after like week, yeah, I think it was about week five, week six. He showed flashes of being more than that, being an actual pass rusher, a disruptor in the pocket, which I like. That's why, I mean, I wasn't high on him initially, like some people were, but he has shown that. Broncos, they got a ton of free agents there on the line. Wolf, you got uh, Jelby Harris. Uh, they even have Mike uh, Purcell, who's been actually their most productive defensive lineman this year. So they go ahead, they get Brown. Brown, I think he's going to probably, for me, I wouldn't touch him really until mid to late second round. But I could definitely see a team jumping on him just because the guy is... A monster he's physically he looks dominant and like i said man he is you, the nfl they love a good run defender and he's a great run defender and then we got carolina panthers i don't know what will greer is gonna look like we're doing this you know he starts this week so if he ends up closing out the season look, look looking phenomenal obviously they probably won't go justin herbert but typically new coach new regime means new quarterback Herbert, he's just based on his arm talent, he's going to probably be a top 10 pick. 
Whether you think so or not, the NFL loves arm talent. They think they could work with that. So they go ahead, they 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 start the rebuild. Because let's be honest, let's call let's call a spade a spade. It's gonna be a rebuild. So they go ahead, they get Herbert, they get their quarterback of the future. Cam Newton's probably gone, probably a free agent after this season. So just saying. Then we got the Falcons who've kind of played themselves out of getting to the top corner. They could still go Christian Fulton here, but I like Isaiah Simmons. Um, the Falcons, defensively, they've been playing a lot better, but if we if you go look at linebacker, it's been kind of a mess. Deion Jones has still been pretty good. He's been pretty good in coverage, but man, Devondre Campbell has been bad. And that's putting it nicely. He's been really, really bad in coverage. You get Isaiah Simmons, who is a freak athlete. He is the new generation of linebacker. This guy, he could he could be a honestly a jumbo linebacker or a jumbo safety. The, I I just love all the potential that Isaiah Simmons is. I don't really I shouldn't really have to talk you into thinking he's a good player. I think for the consensus, everyone loves them some Isaiah Simmons. On to the next picks. We got 13 through 16. We got the Oakland Raiders. They're going Christian Fulton. They're getting in a cornerback. They desperately need a cornerback. Um, they suck in coverage. They do. Uh, they got some decent. They got some decent. They've already invested pretty decently in safety. So I don't. I think they're gonna get someone that act that'll play on the outside next to um, Mullen, who <laughs> Mullen in his own right has been pretty bad. But yeah, I mean they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't really played Isaiah Johnson either. So just they go in, they get another guy. Um, Fulton, I think he's right up there uh, with uh, Okuda. So I like Fulton. I think he's one of the better players, one of the best players in this draft. And then the Colts. Man, if you saw Monday Night Football, you know they need help at receiver. They have no playmakers. You could say, well, they need a quarterback. Uh, they got they got Brissett for another year, so I think they could hold hold the phone. They like they like him, they like him, but he has no one to throw to. Zach Pascal, uh, he kind of disappears. He's like Houdini. Uh, Marcus Johnson's kind of been all right. Um, T. Y. Hilton, he's always hurt. So I they go ahead, they get Lavisca Chenault Jr., who I love. He's got great size. That's why they brought in Funches. They wanted a big bodied receiver, but. Don't be uh, like Chano. He can play on the outside. He he's he's a great he's great at breaking tackles. The guy he's I I uh, everyone you'll hear everyone say this. He's gonna be a threat um on the screen. So like the I think uh, someone I forgot who who said it. So I'm sorry if I'm uh, misquoting somebody. But uh, you got Cordell Patterson. And Golden Tate, if they were to have a baby, which physically they can't, but if they could, it would be Lavisca, Lavis, yeah, Lavisca Chanel Jr. So I just like the pick here. I they've I think they've drafted last year uh, their ten draft picks, right? Seven of them were defense. They've spent enough on the defense. The offense is struggling. The offense needs help. So they get a guy. They get a playmaker. They get Chanel Jr. And the Browns, they go ahead. They get Alex Leatherwood. They need help. <laughs> they need they need help on the line. I mean, what's more to say? The offense has looked terrible this year. So if your offense ain't looking so great, then your defense ain't gonna look good, of course, right? That's just how it happens. I think the defense is solid. Their defense is good. They don't really need. They can maybe address safety, but not a great safety draft. They could get Delpit at this pick, but. More importantly, you need to find someone to protect the quarterback. Then Leatherwood, like I said, he's got great versatility. Um, but they need someone on the outside, not named Glenn Robinson, not Hubbard. They need someone who can actually guard. And then here it goes, Grand Pitt. He's going, he's off the board. He's to the Eagles. I was going to go receiver here because I really like Henry Ruggs at this pick. So if you're mad at that, I'm sorry. I, 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 I like it. I agree. But it's just their secondary has been such a mess. And then you got guys like Greg Ward, who's looked pretty decent. It's, um, they spent a pick on uh, Arthe- uh, Thago Whiteside last year. 
So if they really want to go receiver, you can do it later in the draft. It's a really good receiving draft. But they need help in the secondary. I don't care where. You can go safety. You can go corner. You can go slot. They just need help. They have probably they have among the worst coverage grades in all of football. It is what it is. Like I said, the free agency, it's not it's not great free agency for cornerbacks. So they're going to have to get one in the draft. I mean, too, Grant Delpit, he's got the versatility to really play anywhere as far as coverage. He'll cover the guy in the slot. He'll cover a tight end. He'll go on the outside. He's got great versatility. I like Delpit with this pick. And then picks 17 through 20. We got Tampa Bay. They go on AJ Epinesa, edge out of Iowa. And you might be like, what? They need help on the offensive line. Yes. But... You know they could address that in a free agency. You probably got another year of Winston. So, the offense, you know what? He may turn the ball over a ton, but he also scores a ton of points. Probably get a little help on the defense. So, why not corner? Because since week 10, uh, Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis are actually the highest, uh, the highest graded coverage duo. Since week 10. What? And then you also just last year invested um, a second round pick in Sean Bunnan Jr. Jr.? I think it's Jr. But to play the slot, he's been hit or miss. But you develop that. You could go safety. But guess what? Grand Pitt, he's off the board. So I'm just saying, your boy Shaq, your sack leader, he's a free agent. You're probably going to resign him, but he is a free agent. Sue is a free agent as well. You get A.J. Epinesa, a guy with the versatility to play on the edge and play on the line, like inside of the tackle. Yeah, that's dangerous. I like that pick. And this is great value because he could go. He should go much higher, but it just happened to he fall. It fell this way. Next, we got the Raiders back on the board. Oh, they get Antonio Brown, kind of. They get Henry Ruggs the third. The guy, he's going to run like a sub 4 3 40 it's got ridiculous speed and it just hurts my heart because it he's gonna be such a deep threat that i don't think Derek carr will throw to him because <laughs> he doesn't look past 10 yards <laughs> but you know what i he's a very he's a pretty good route runner you know so uh i i, I think he fits gruden system perfectly like i said you, they get what they they thought they had in Antonio Brown. What what they had just just vanished. Uh, but rugs, I like this. You get you get a top corner, you get a top receiver. You look. I think it's a good it's a good first round for the Raiders. On to the Titans. Where do you go? Because all the pass rushers are kind of getting hurt, you know. So uh, as far as uh, the draft, because like I think Julian o- Okawara would be a really good pick here. You could even go Curtis Weaver. But let's be honest, it that offensive line has it's not been bad. Don't get me wrong, the offensive line has not been bad, and it's actually a very good offensive line for the Titans, but you definitely can upgrade. Like just look just go on and look at right. Looking at their guard position. Because I think Tyler Bedaz or <laughs> Tyler Biotish, excuse me, he, he's a good fit. Because they've been running a lot of lot more zone scheme this season, zone blocking scheme this season, and Nate Davis has been terrible. He is a del- he, the guy he shouldn't he shouldn't have been started. It's his rookie season. He's he he's a work in progress. So you get a guy who's plug and play basically in Tyler Biotish, and man, you get him. You got uh who's on the other side there. Got uh, Southfold, um, who honestly he's I think he signed only a two-year deal. So maybe by after this pass after after the 2020 season, 2021, Nate Davis is ready to come in and be a starter. And then you just got a good offensive line from there. They could go tackle, but I feel like they might re-sign Cochlin. And but I mean Dennis Kelly's been pretty good as well. Um, but I like this pick. I think, I think this really, it, it really just helps out the run game. Let's be honest; they love giving Derrick Henry the ball. 
<laughs> and then you got CJ Henderson for the Jags. They need they need help in the uh, secondary. Their highest uh their yeah, their highest graded uh secondary member, secondary player. There we go. Is uh DJ Hayden and he plays he's only a slot player. Uh AJ Boye, he's probably gone after this season. CJ Henderson is one of the most competitive players in this draft. I'm surprised he's actually coming out this year because he's very he's been very committed to Florida, um, the university. But the guy is very competitive. He's not as good as he was the season before, but he's been battling. He battles for every ball. It's it's he he makes no catch or like anytime he gets caught on that receiver earned it. I'm just saying. He's one of my favorite players in this draft. He's going to test extremely well at the Combine. It is what it is. I think it's a good pick. He gets your Jalen Ramsey um, replacement. Then picks 21 through 23 Cowboys. They go Javon Kinlaw. I don't know how he fell here. Um, but the Cowboys, they could use a little help on the inside. They've tried over and over, trial and error, trying to patch up the inside. We haven't really seen much of uh, Tristan Hill. So, Kinlaw is phenomenal. He's a great pass rusher. Um, coming into the year, we thought he was very raw, but oh man, why? Well, no, this guy's ready. He's ready for the big time. I think he has the highest ceiling of any of the interior um, defensive uh, linemen in this draft. It's just a great pick. And then the Dolphins, they got back to back picks. They go edge, they go offensive line. Josh Jones. He might end up being a top 15 pick after the Senior Bowl. And then Curtis Weaver, one of my favorite players in the draft. He is the most disruptive edge rusher in college football, not named Chase Young. And then the Vikings. You know you need corners, Vikings. You know it. It looks like Kirk Cousin. I don't know, man. It looks like he, he, might, he might have a career in Minnesota. So you need corner help because Xavier Rhodes, he's... I don't know if he'll be on the team this year or next season, but he's played terrible. Um, Trey Waynes, he's a free agent. He's been bad. Uh, Mike uh, Mike Hughes, he hasn't looked that great. Uh, so you go ahead, you get Bryce Hall, who's been he was a shutdown corner before the injury. Um, he would have been the top corner in the if he um, declared last season, but he didn't. I still th- I think he's up there with um, Christian Fulton and CJ Henderson. I like Bryce Hall here at this pick. The guy's a stud and he, he would fit well for he, he's exactly what Mike Zimmer loves. Big, big boys. <laughs> uh, we got Buffalo with the next pick. They go edge because they, they could use an upgrade on the edge. They could because uh, Jerry Hughes ain't going to be there forever. Uh, was it Shaq Lawson's a free agent? So, Brett Lewis, I think, is a Buffalo Bill type of guy. He's been more, he's the most dominant edge rusher for Alabama. He's he's just been a beast this year. He's been a beast. Of some of the biggest questions were injury um, concerns. Those are kind of red flags because he has been beat up throughout his coll- uh, collegiate career, but he's been able to stay healthy. Guy's got tree trunks for legs. The dude's just strong. I like him a lot. Uh, I think he's a top 25 type of player. And then the Chiefs, they got a lot of free agents at corner. It's kind of wild because they've actually, their defense has played much better since the first half of the season. But like I said, they got a lot of free agents there at a corner. So they go ahead, they go uh, Travon Diggs, who everyone's judging him for that LSU game. He didn't look completely terrible against LSU. He gave up some big plays, yes. But I don't think you can judge a guy just on one game. I mean, if you look throughout the season, he's been a shutdown corner. He's got great athleticism, just like his, uh, his brother or cousin. I think it's cousin Stefan Diggs, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but he's got great athleticism. The dude's quick. Uh, he's got really good technique. Uh, he's just a really good player. So Chiefs. They get they get a act they get a corner. I think that's good. I mean, honestly, the Chiefs they could go anywhere on defense because they do need a little bit better pass rush. 
Uh, they could use a little help on the interior as far as from a run defender standpoint. But you get run defenders like late in the draft, so don't even worry yourselves with one of the first round. Linebacker, I wish there was a linebacker. Like Dylan Moses, maybe. I just don't know. Until he actually declares, I don't think I could put Dylan, Dylan Moses in the first round yet. Just because I'm so confident he's coming back to school. And then T. Higgins, he's been my most – like this guy – He's a staple for this Green Bay Packers pick. And it's a shame because I, he's moving up way higher on my list. He's been outstanding this season. He's actually kind of outshined, uh, what was it, uh, Justin Ross? His uh, his counter, his uh, basically his tim- teammate who's probably going to be the one or the, probably the one or the two uh, wide receiver in next, in next, um, the 2021 draft right up there with jamar chase but he's kind of outshined him i like t higgins he looks like a guy aaron Rodgers would kind of like yeah that's what i got for that and then san fran not a lot of people are gonna like this pick i like it uh running back always goes in the first round it's so so it's like i'm trying to anticipate where one might go uh and i gotta go to the 49ers because they don't need a lot you could go they could go uh, anywhere on the offensive line. Uh, there's no one I really like outside of Samuel Cosme. Uh, but I really like Tra- Travis Etienne, uh, Etienne for this. Because Matt Parade is a free agent. Um, they could release uh, Tevin Coleman. He's not guar- He has no guaranteed money, so they can release him this season. Um, so then what you're only left with Raheem Mostert. So yeah, Etienne, the guy's phenomenal. He, for every carry, he's he's breaking two tackles. That's a crazy rate of broken tackles. The dude's just a home run threat. He's a playmaker. I think he would be do very well in uh, Kyle Shanahan's offense. On to picks 29 through 32. We got the Patriots. Let's be honest. They're probably going to trade down. I don't know. The Patriots, they could do whatever they want. They could even go Jacob Eason. Ooh, man. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would hate that pick. <laughs> but... I got him getting Samuel Cosme. I feel like he's a very Patriot-like player. He's very athletic. I don't think he's... I don't I don't know if he's declared yet. I feel like he... I don't know. I feel like he'll come back. He could be a top 15 pick in the 2021 draft. But he's going to... The guy's going to actually have a tough matchup against Utah. I, I, I really can't wait to see. If he, if he balls out in that game, ooh, this guy could rise his stock up a ton too. But Cosme, you know what? They can move on from uh, Marshall Newhouse. I know they got Isaiah Wynn, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy the last two years. So uh, Marcus Cannon's getting older. They can really go anywhere with this pick. I ended up just picking someone for the offensive line because they could use a little more depth. I mean, they could go tight end, but I mean, uh, I don't think there's really... Like, there's Hunter Bryan, but I don't think he's a first-rounder. There's no first-round tight end. In this draft so it was it's really hard for me to justify reaching for a tight end and then Jalen Rager going to the Saints he's basically it's yeah he's basically Teddy again so you get a replacement for Teddy again they get a deep threat I know uh, we know Rager he he has doesn't have the greatest stats that's partially because of quarterback play but the guys got blazing speed it's probably gonna do he's probably gonna be up there with uh, rugs as a sub 4-3 so yeah dude's just got great separation I really like Rager and then at here for the Seahawks I don't know why I put it that way but the Seahawks all right they go on Marvin Wilson out of Florida State um Marvin Wilson's had a great season it got cut short because of the hand but the dude's a monster he's probably he was probably the best pass rush and interior uh lineman offensive or defensive lineman this season until the injury um he was slowing down a little bit but the guy the guy is just good uh seattle seahawks someone again pointed this out to me they typically go somewhere with the line they go on the offensive line there's there's a few rarities where they go elsewhere like maybe a rashad penny or uh earl thomas but they typically they like their offensive linemen they like their defensive linemen they got a lot of free agents on the defensive line. So Marvin Wilson makes sense with this pick. And then 
the Baltimore Ravens, they need help at pass rush. Yes, Raven fans, you know you need help at pass rush. They go your tier, Gross Matos, athletic freak. He's shown improvements, but he's still developing. He could probably go a lot higher because the guy's potential is huge. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, let me know what you think in the comments below. But as always, you be easy, my friends. Later.